In this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about my favorite technique of integration, integration by parts. So let's start with a little bit of review. If I have the integral of 2x times e to the x squared dx, okay, well hopefully you're familiar enough with the standard techniques in calculus to solve this. You would say, oh, okay, well u, I'm going to let u be x squared, and then I can take the derivative, get du to be 2x dx, so then you end up with the integral of e to the u du, which gets you e to the u plus c, and then since u was x squared, it's not e to the u plus c, it's e to the x squared plus c, right? Simple enough, hopefully you feel pretty good about that. However, what if we wanted to do something like 2x times e to the x dx? How would we do that? So you might say to yourself, okay, well, maybe I'll take u to be e to the x. Well, no, that doesn't really work out. So if I do that, how, how do I get there? Well, this is kind of the motivation behind the, the technique of integration by parts. And integration by parts exploits a hopefully well understood topic in differentiation, that of the product rule. So if you go back to the product rule, if I have the derivative of two functions multiplied together, remember I get the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, right? So in each case, I just sort of copy it, and then I take a derivative on the first one, then I take a derivative on the second one. Now, I'm going to rewrite this. Instead of using f and g, what I'm going to use are these terms u and v. So I'm going to say u and v, where both of those are functions of x, but I'm not going to write u of x, I'm not going to write v of x. I'm going to shorthand this. So if I do that, then I get the same sort of format. I get u dv plus v du. Now this is a little bit a little bit odd because in this particular case I'm taking the derivative of the first one but it's, it's over here whereas up here it was the derivative of the first one was there. But it's u dv plus v du. So really I'm just saying first one keep it, leave it alone, take the derivative of the second. Second one, leave it alone, take the derivative of the first. Algebraically these are the same. So why am I doing this? Well, I'm doing this to kind of develop a, a little bit of technique because if I have this relationship and then I decide, and then I say, okay, well, what would the antiderivative of this derivative be? Well, the antiderivative of a derivative, those are kind of like inverse processes. You get back the original function here, or, you know, that composite function, but you have an arbitrary constant, right? That's the, that's the issue is if you take a derivative and then you take an antiderivative, you end up with that arbitrary constant. So I can put these two pieces together. I can put the fact that I know this and the fact that I know this together and develop a very interesting technique. I can say, all right, I'm going to rearrange this algebraically. I'm going to get u dv by itself. So I subtract v du. I put it over here. That's what I have here. And then I'm going to antiderive both sides because if two things are equal, then their antiderivatives are going to be equal, offset by potentially an arbitrary constant. So the integral of u dv is equal to this integral, dx of uv, which we know to be this, minus the integral of v du. So I just, I'm taking the antiderivative on each of these three terms. Why in the world would I want to do this? Well, this technique itself is integration by parts. What we have is that this. Notice that this changed from this integral here to uv. And I did it plus this. And you might ask yourself, well, where did that plus c? Well, it turns out you don't have to represent that in the formula because when you take the antiderivative here, it will also generate that arbitrary constant. So we, we hold off in writing that when we write this formula. So what does this do for us? Well, what this does for us is it says, okay, if I've got two things multiplied together, two functions multiplied together, this gives me a technique of splitting it into some, some um, quantity that's not got an integral symbol on it, right? Just uv there. And then it also gives me another, hopefully simpler, integral to solve. So let, let's kind of see how this works. There's a sort of this five-step technique here. The first thing we want to do is, okay, if I've got two things multiplied together, one of them looks like it's already derived, right? It's got dv. And one of them, 
looks like it's just pristine left alone. So what I do is I pick one of these that I'm going to take a derivative of. I pick this u. I'm going to take a derivative of u. And I pick the other one and I'm going to anti-derive. I'm going to go the opposite way. So if I take this piece, I'm going to take its derivative. I'm going to take this piece and take its antiderivative. And the reason I have to do that is because I have to find the antiderivative to plug into v here. So I have to find that antiderivative. And then I have to find the derivative of u because it plugs in there. So I'm really just filling out. Um, um, so I have this kind of pattern. I'm filling it out. And then part three is really just finding, you know, once you've identified them, you find them. You find du by differentiation and v by anti-differentiation. In part four, you're really not doing anything other than saying, okay, now that I have u, dv, du, and v, so I have four quantities, I can plug them in where I need to. So I plug in u, I plug in v, I plug in v again, and I plug in du. What you might notice is that you never actually, once you have dv, you actually don't use it over here. It's only used to generate v's. Anyway, moving along, once we do that, we have what we need here. We don't have to do anything else. We can just say, okay, that's uv. That's already anti-derived. It's, it's all alone. But we still have to find this integral. So hopefully what v du is, what, what is in v du now will be easy to anti-derive. And it may not be, and you may actually have to apply this step multiple times, and we'll go through those situations. So let's take a look at our original thing. We have 2x e to the x dx. So the way you were going to split this up is you say, all right, one of these quantities I'm going to take a derivative of. So I'm going to say 2x, because 2x is pretty easy to take the antiderivative of. And in general, a trick is to take the quantity that you think you can make simpler by taking its derivative. For instance, we could have picked u to be e to the x, but when we take its derivative, it doesn't get any simpler. It just stays e to the x. So that's kind of not a good choice, typically. It could be, but typically it's not a good choice. But 2x will get simpler, so by picking it, I get something simpler, 2dx. Now, in the dv case, what we want to do is we want to pick something that either becomes simpler or doesn't become massively more complicated when we take its antiderivative. That makes e to the x a very good choice because if I take e to the x, and notice I keep the dx here, you want every little piece of this to be, to be incorporated. You want the 2x, you want the e to the x, and the dx. Notice that the d's go together here and the d's go together over here. But if e to the x dx, if I take its antiderivative, I just get e to the x. So I don't get anything more complicated. So by doing this, I got something simpler. By doing this, I didn't get anything more complicated. So we, we're pretty sure we're on the right track here. So now I have these four pieces. Notice that's kind of like step one through three all together. I can plug it into the formula. u dv is equal to uv minus v du. I, I recommend you actually copy this pattern and then fill in the blanks. So u is 2x, dv is e to the x dx, u is 2x, v is e to the x, so again I'm pulling from this table, minus, don't forget your minus, this is not a plus, the integral of v, okay that's e to the x, du, okay that's 2dx. So with a little bit of rearranging, I pull the 2 out front, so I just get the same thing, 2x e to the x minus 2 e to the x dx. And the antiderivative of e to the x is just e to the x, so we end up with really just what was in here pops right out. 2x e to the x minus 2 e to the x plus the arbitrary constant. And that's really the technique. There are some more advanced techniques that you'll need to use when, when dealing with integration by parts, and we'll talk a little bit about those. but. Generally speaking, this is the process, and this is how you do it. And practice is going to make perfect. And integration by parts isn't something that necessarily comes easily to anyone. But if you do it a lot, it actually starts to become easy because the process doesn't really change. You're, it's just about getting more familiar with what, which one you take a derivative of, which one you take the antiderivative of. And it really reinforces a lot of the basic calculus concepts by using it.